Hi viewers and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be looking at the path array. This is available from the draft workbench and we're going to be understanding how to place objects along the path and have them tangent along there. So if we had a curve like so, you can see how they're tangent to that curve and follow that curve, hugging it and keeping in line with it. We'll be using standard geometry, such as a sketch, and then looking how to use that in a sweep, and also using the curves workbench to actually have more control over the ray and how that attaches to the edge. We'll be understanding the tangency, how the profiles are aligned in the sketcher, and how you can utilize the curves workbench join tool to alter the tolerance and the continuity of that edge to affect the final outcome. If you like this video, please hit a like and also subscribe to the channel. I also have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate to my contributions to the community and that's at ko-fi.com slash mang0. So we're in FreeCAD and we're going to look at this tool first of all. The tool we're looking at is on the draft workbench and it's on the modifications Ray tools and it's this path array here. To use this, it can be a bit tricky. So what we need first is something to actually create an array of. So I'm gonna create a simple extrude and I'm gonna place it along the XZ plane there. Hit okay. And I'm gonna create a simple rectangle. That sits round about here. I'm not going to worry about constraints. We're just going to close that. This is just for demonstration purposes. So we've got our sketch and I'm going to come over to the part and I'm just going to strew that. So this is the item that I want to make multiple copies of along a path. So we've got that there. I'll actually give it a bit more extrusion. So we've got that there. And from the top, we're looking down from it there. And there's the front view. I'm now gonna create a path for it to follow. So I'm gonna come over to the sketcher. And we're gonna create a sketch in here. And I'm gonna place it along the, let's just cancel that. I'm gonna place it along the, the ZY plane there. So new sketch, YZ plane, and OK. So now we've got our block there, and now we're gonna place a sketch along here. This follows a path, but we can also follow an edge of the object, which I'm gonna be showing you after we've done this demonstration. I'm gonna use a B spline because they're notoriously difficult for CAD users, and if anything goes wrong, it's gonna go wrong with a B spline. So I'm going to create a shape with this B spline. Zoom out a bit so we can see what we're doing. And hit escape there. Hit escape again. I'm just going to modify this. Something like that. So that's the spline that I want this to be duplicated over. Let's click on right and we can see how we want that to be built along that spline there. Jump over to the draft workbench. I'm going to start to use this tool. So to use this tool, it's also available from the arrays here. So we've got path array there, as well as on the modification menus, ray tools, and path array. So we first need to select the object and then select the path. And that can be a B spline, a spline, an edge, etc. So first select the object, the extrude, and then I'm gonna select the path, this one here. I can also select it from this menu over here. So we've got the object and the path. Modifications, array tools, and then path array. Let's place four copies along there. Now we can increase the count. So if we come down to the count, and I'm gonna set this one to something like 20, you can see 
20 copies of that has been placed along that path. We can see a bit of a problem here in that they're not tangent to the path. I actually want the base of these touching this path. So they follow tangent to that path. To do that, we come into the path array and this can be a bit tricky. The first one we see under here is alignment. We set that to true. And straight away, you can see a problem in that it's actually aligned this correctly for a certain axis. Come over to the line mode. Let's set this to tangent and click off. You can see we've still got the problem. Let's come back to our path array. What we want to look at is this tangent vector. So I'm just going to pull this up so we can see that. Let's open this out. At the moment, the vector's on the X. So I'm going to hit zero and place it along the Y. We can see now we've got this tangent to that path. But the top is touching the path rather than the bottom. And all we need to do is set the false vertical here to true. That places it along the top. I've clicked off and that takes effect. Control R or edit, refresh, does exactly the same thing. So we've got that false vertical in there and that's all following that path. Now, if we took this sketch and changed the path, then this will follow that path. It's fully parametric and will follow that path. One problem that might occur when you create these profiles to actually sweep along that path is where you actually place them in 3D space. At the moment, this is placed correctly in our point of origin. If we move this over to the right hand side, for instance, if we was referencing external geometry by importing an edge, then this will be incorrect. It will actually appear to be disconnected from that path. Even if that path wasn't running through the origin point, i.e. creating an array across an external edge that is not running through the point of origin. We've got other modifications in there as well. So I'm just going to hit Control Z to bring that back and hit Control R just to refresh that. So that's sitting along that path there. Go into the path array. As well as tangent vector, we've got vertical vector here. So you can see that vertical vector is to do with this line that runs and touches the bottom, the actual path it's following. If I come into the path array and change that vertical vector, so Z and use a minus one in there, it will flip that to the top. So we can change this vertical vector to whatever we want. get a different look and feel for the path array. I'm just going to leave it with a Z of 1, like so. So that is all tangent to that path. What happens if we're placing this on an object? So I've just started a new document. And what we're going to do is create a sweep across a path and then create an array of objects along that path. I'm going to come over to the sketcher and I'm going to create a profile to sweep across that path. So I'm going to create a new sketch along the XZ plane. This is going to be my profile. So we're looking for the center and we're going to place our profile along here. Again, I'm just going to create something like a rectangle there and maybe have something just removed from the middle. I'm just going to use the trim tool in here just to remove this from here and these two edges and also delete this. I'm not going to worry about constraining this down. I'm just going to make these two symmetrical to this line. You'd also fully constrain your sketch. And we just make sure this isn't of some silly small size. So we've got, let's say, 10 millimeters along there. 
and also bring this up a bit. And with a bit of a gap. Okay, so we've got this. Let's close up. So that's our profile. I'm now going to place a path for this to follow. So I'm going to click on right. So this is where I want the path to be, right in the middle of here. So that's the YZ plane. Look at the handle down the bottom right. And I'm going to click off, make sure that new sketch isn't attached to anything. And I want the YZ or ZY plane. Okay, that. So we've got that profile sitting there. And I'm going to create a beast plane again. Can be whatever one you want. I'm just going to stick to a beast spline and place that along there. Hit escape, and we're just going to change the curvature of this to something like that. I'm now going to sweep this across that profile. So we take the sketch, but we need to be in the part. We can use the part design if we so desire. And we need the sketch that we're going to be using and the path for the sweep. You can use the utility sweep, also available on path sweep. We need to click our profile, which we click on the left hand side there, it'll highlight. Press the right arrow and we're going to create this as a solid as well. So I'm going to click solid, click sweep path and it'll ask for the actual path. So we select it from our view, click done. It looks like it hasn't done anything. Don't hit this button again, just hit OK and that'll sweep it across there like so. So we've got this track here now. Now before we were selecting this edge here, instead we want to select this edge to create our array along. But first of all, we need something to place along here. So I'm going to create something simple along here. I'm going to go back to the sketcher and we're going to give ourselves a bit of room. Make sure nothing's selected and create a sketch. We're looking along the ZX plane or the XZ plane. Okay, that. So this side is flush with this. Makes life a lot easier. I'm going to create just something simple. And I'm going to place it along here. So I'm going to bring in this edge. And I'm going to place just a simple profile along there. So that's attached there. I'm going to close it and bring this out a bit so we can see what we're doing. Go to the part and we're going to extrude it by something like 2 mil. Hit OK. That's extruded that by 2 mil. It's a bit too big actually, so let's come into it and do it by 0 0.5. A bit less, 0 0.25. So that's sitting along there, it's not touching. You can see that the tangency is only to this edge here. I'm now going to come over to the draft workbench. We're going to select the extrude and then control click this edge here. Come up to the modifications, array tools, and path array. We can see that path array has moved over to the left hand side. But we're looking at the path object is sweep and sweep edge is 15 there, which is this one here, which is correct. We can come into our extrude and double click it. And I'm going to take the constraints off of this and move this over this way. And we can observe what actually happens to this. So you can see it's moving over. So if I have it touching the center line and hit close, you can see how that is hovering over that center line there. 
and let's move this down to the point of origin here. I should have constrained this, but we're still working with this, so that's okay. Let's close that. And you can see that is now on that edge. So it's important to know, as in with our original sketch, our original path that sits here, that if the sketch is not on the point of origin, then it will deviate from the path, even if the path is over here. So you can't actually use this path that's going along here and import these points along here to match it up to the path because we have to think of it from the point of origin. Let's close that. Let's have a look what we got. So we've got these that are sitting along this edge. I want to embed them slightly into that edge. So I'm gonna come into the sketch and I'm just gonna move this down a bit. I should really constrain this, something like that. And hit close. So those are slightly into that edge now. Come up to the path array and let's just increase this to something like 50. Let's bring this down a bit so we have some space in between so we can see what we're doing. Again, we've got a problem with tangency. So we hit the path array and what we need to do is come in alignment true. Those all lined end to end, which I don't want. So we come into the line mode, set that to tangent. Sometimes that will solve it. If not, we come into the tangent vector. Zero on the X, one on the Y. That's tangent to that vector now. And click origin, you can see how that changes. Let's come back down to the line mode. Let's try free net. This should stack it on top of there, like so. So we're following that. Got some interesting breaks in there. So I'm gonna stick with the aligners true and the tangent. So it's touching there. We've got the tangency there, which is fine. Let's have a look at the extra translation. And we're gonna translate along the X axis. And let's try minus one millimeter. And you can see how far that translates over. So we have to be careful with this because it does seem to nudge it quite a long way. So near 0 0.1. And let's change this to a minus. And something like 0 0.5. 0.8 and I think it's going to be about 0 0.6.2 something like that there we go so we've got those along that edge there all the way along and up and we can increase the number so let's come down and increase the number so we've got 30 at the moment so let's stick this back up to 50 and those are sitting along there. We can then do some booleans or some unions with this. So for instance, that's being placed along there and I can go into the path array, hit, click on the sweep, control click the path array and come over to the part workbench and do a cut along there. And that will cut that into our object. So we've left with a texture going all the way along there. One other thing we can do, if we get rid of that cut, and I'm gonna get rid of the path array, is I'm gonna try something different this time. I'm gonna make use of something called the Curves Workbench. And we can come into here and actually extract out this curve. If you haven't got the Curves Workbench, you'll need to install it from the Tools Add-on Manager. And you'll find the Curves Workbench in there. And you just click it and you look down and you'll find 
it's sitting here. Close out there. So we can select the edge and we can use something called a join tool. So if we look along here, this join selects the edge into a B-spine curve, also available on curves, join curves. You can see there's a purple line, purple curve that runs along there. That's it stretched out that join curve there. And we can use that to place our extrude across. So we've got our extrude, which is sitting down here. And we can come over to the draft. We can take the extrude and the join curve and do exactly the same. Modifications, array tools, half array. And that places it directly upon that curve, like so. Let's try that again. Let's get rid of that join curve. Matter of fact, let's place another join curve in there. So here. And come to the curves workbench and use the join curve again. And what I'm going to do is just click on that path array and then select the other join curve and hit OK. And that's flipped it over to the other side. You can see we've got a problem because what it's done is just it's basically taken that and moved it so the other edge sits on there. So we might need to do some amendments with that. The other thing you can do is if we just change it back to the original join curve, okay that, and click, and we don't need this one anymore. We can come in and change that path array and change it to allow it to join up much more effectively with that edge. So I'm going to do a count in there, make sure it's the line is true, and also line mode or origin tangent that one and also false vertical true tangent vector and stick that to one along the y to flip it around and zero along the x that's sitting along there nicely now you can see how that sits along there and of course if we had that say on here and we're in the curse workbench and use the join curve there and flip them between the two we can see that that places that directly upon there now now we've added all that and it sits there nicely so we've got a join curve well what we can do is come down to the shape approximation down here set that to true and we can affect how closely this follows that curve so we've got some deviation on here, which this one is, is quite good. We can actually fix that to an extent with degrees max and the tolerance. So I'm going to place the tolerance above zero. See how that's changed. That all of a sudden changed there. Degrees max set to 17 to 15. You probably see this drop to 14. That's the maximum degrees we can go. And I can press the up arrow on the degrees min and hit control R. And you can see how we can modify that shape of that path array along that curve. And we've got some items like continuity in there, which may or may not have an effect on that. And we can bring down this tolerance to 0 0.5. Normally find the tolerance of 1 is best to allow you to start modifying this. But we can play with this and change how this actually looks. So there's another tip there, so you can actually use the Curse Workbench and use these tools up here, and rather than attaching them to the object itself, you can actually attach them to a curve derived from that object for more control over that. So I hope that was helpful. Please keep an eye on the channel because throughout the week I'll be releasing more videos around the Curse Workbench, around modeling new free CAD, around animation as well. And I'm going to be bringing back the programming series as well. And I've got a new and upcoming project for that. So that's going to be releasing series two of the Python programming from a free CAD perspective. Hope you're enjoying the channel and I hope to see you again soon.
If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to my site. And also I have a Ko-Fi site where you can actually donate a few pence or a few pounds, dollars, or whatever your currency is. And that's at ko-fi.com slash M-A-N-G zero. And there you'll be able to help me fund my site and all the money that I actually get from any funds will actually get pushed back into the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing. I'll see you next time.